Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Monday, the 20th of August, over here in the Atlantic. First off, check this out, Invest 95L, it was a split-off system from Helene that went into Mexico, and as I've been talking about for a while now, these remnants are, th are a threat for redevelopment over the water at the tail end of this frontal boundary that's now getting into the Gulf in the middle of August, which is impressive. This kind of situation over 30 to 31 degrees Celsius water means that we have to watch this, and you can see, if we uh, zoom in on this, that there's a little bit of a cyclonic a rotation trying to develop here south southeast of Brownsville and uh, this is a little spread out and elongated for the moment but during the next 48 hours it will remain over the water and could have a chance to spin up into something and the NHC is now watching this and they're sending a plane into it uh, in a couple of hours so we'll get to see what's going on here and uh, right now it's not going to move a whole lot as this front presses farther and farther east, high pressure is going to be building to the north of the front in its wake, and eventually that's going to push this back inland over northern Mexico or extreme southern Texas, probably not going to get much farther north than Brownsville if it does gain any latitude. In general, this is going to increase uh, the rain chances for southern Texas and northern Mexico here, and rain will probably be the biggest story with this, uh, but if it winds up quickly in a short amount of time, because remember, these small systems in the western Gulf, the ghost of Humberto, uh, can sometimes show up and uh, you got to watch these but uh, probably not going to be a huge deal wind wise mostly rain but something to keep an eye on uh, here in the Gulf out in the middle of the Atlantic though the big story taker or stealer is going to continue to be Invest 94L if it actually does end up developing out here you can see it looks more well defined this morning in terms of the circulation and uh, not a lot of thunderstorms going on with it but how many times this season and last season and a lot of seasons like this where there's dry air plaguing the central Atlantic have we seen these massive swirls come off of Africa move westward and be barren of thunderstorms until about 50 west which it is approaching today and uh, remember at about 50 west is when the oceanic heat content increases and in years like this when dry air is a problem in the main development region you generally have to wait until the wave gets past 50 west when the waters suddenly warm up a bunch and then the thunderstorms usually start to go um, as an example Hurricane Irene last year in almost the exact same location as uh, Invest 94L looked just as scanty. There was almost no thunderstorm activity with Irene's circulation, but she ended up coming through Puerto Rico as a hurricane a few days later after she got past uh, the colder water, and uh, that's probably what will occur with this in terms of uh, not really intensifying for now, uh, intensifying a little bit slower uh, than I thought it would yesterday but it probably will still get named before reaching the islands as it starts to get towards this warmer water here you can see uh, that the convergence boundary here is outlining where the boundary between moist and dry air is here it has a nice bubble being drawn from the monsoon trough and is isolating itself keeping the dry air to the north at bay and will now probably start mixing everything around and get some convection going now if we look at the track of this thing, the philosophy hasn't changed a whole lot. This is the GFS out to day two on the ensemble 500 millibar. Notice we have the trough that was shoving the front in with 95L in the Gulf. This trough is moving on into the eastern part of the United States. We have the big ridge over the central Atlantic and uh, this will be steering 94L westward towards the islands, almost due west, maybe slightly north of, towards the northern Antilles uh, during the next few days. If we go out to day four, this trough starts to leave because of a combination of the blocking over the Arctic and the trough digging in towards Western Europe is forcing this trough to leave, but it's also forcing it to leave a piece behind. Notice the depression here over the southeast United States. This is basically a trough split situation. This is splitting away and keeping the weakness in the ridge open and making it soft in there. And if we get to day seven, this backs westward. It forces blocking to develop over the top, and we have this weakness sitting down here east of Florida and this corridor is where I think the storm is going to have to go here this weakness in the ridge north of the Bahamas and the models are still disagreeing on where this is going to go within the last 24 to 48 hours they flipped around a lot right now we still have the European in the Caribbean with this by day seven not really trying to develop it probably a function of the fact that it's too weak on the model and uh, makes it go farther west in the GFS ensembles yesterday, the good majority of them were following the the European into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, uh, which is a little bit too far west for me. I much like I much better like the look of the 6C ensembles from last night, uh, which have this coming across uh, 
the Dominican Republic and north of the Bahamas into the weakness that I mentioned before. The pattern favors a run at the eastern seaboard and uh, probably going to be turning north here. I don't think it's going into the Gulf unless it does happen to just refuse to develop, get torn apart in Hispaniola, and then uh, get tangled up with the islands and get into the Gulf. That's certainly not an impossibility, but I do think this is going to strengthen enough that by the time it gets to Hispaniola, it's already gaining latitude and starts to come north and makes it into the Bahamas later. So in general, my track is uh, not changed too awful much, has been nudged southwest after the 48-hour mark, and the intensity has been lowered, which is also one reason why the track has had to shift, because again, the stronger the storm, the sooner it starts to move northward, and uh, I still think it'll get named by the islands here, and then it's going to probably interact with Hispaniola, and this will be the wild card right here, because if it actually makes a pass over Hispaniola, it's going to weaken a bunch, and uh, usually when these tracks try to come north over Hispaniola, they get a jolt westward, uh, before they start to move north again, and that could mean uh, a lot of significant things for the Bahamas if this is a strengthening storm coming off of the islands, and then uh, if it gets enough time over water and doesn't run into Florida, it could be a problem uh, for the eastern seaboard farther north, and this is looking more and more like a United States problem given how long this is taking to develop and how much farther west it is going to track. The pattern itself is a little bit farther west than it was for Irene last year. To give you an example, and Irene scraped North Carolina and went into New York City, and uh, the pattern is a little bit farther west than that, so it's possible this could be a solid uh, Carolina's landfall or the southeast U.S. coast in general in the long range, but we're still over a week out from landfall like that, so you can see by how wide the cone is here, the, the uncertainty is fairly large out here in the long range, but in the short range, I think we're starting to get this uh, fairly nailed down in terms of the northern islands, Puerto Rico and Hispaniola are going to have to watch this quite carefully, as this could be not necessarily a really strong wind threat because this shouldn't be a hurricane that fast, uh, but definitely lots of rain and a strengthening storm that could bring problems, especially to Hispaniola with all of the high mountains, and uh, then we'll have to watch it for the Bahamas and the United States after that. So we will continue to watch this, and along with 95L in the western gulf, should be mainly a rain threat for now, uh, but spinning up in the backyard, so something to watch closely. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.